this time out, I have come to the village of Bernal, which is located about an hour's bus ride from Carretero. Bernal is one of a number of villages in this region that is known as a Pueblo Magico, or Magic Pueblo. This one, however, has something that makes it even more special. The main feature here is the Peñas de Bernal. Translated, that means the Rock of Bernal. There's no escape in the huge feature when you're in the village, and this is where we will begin. The Peña de Bernal is by some measurements the third largest monolith in the world and definitely the largest in Mexico. By definition, a natural monolith is a geologic feature made up of a single rock or stone. Other examples of monoliths include Devil's Tower in Wyoming, Ayers Rock in Australia, and the Rock of Gibraltar. A recent scientific article says that the Peña de Bernal rises 1,421 feet from its base which would make it the tallest freestanding rock in the world. That is 23 feet taller than the Rock of Gibraltar. Experts say that this monolith consists of the lava that was inside of a volcano about 8.7 million years ago. Over that ensuing time, the volcano itself eroded away, leaving the lava cone to stand on its own. Fully two-thirds of the rock is silica, a mineral which is resistant to weathering. It costs a few pesos to ascend the Peña between the hours of 8 and 5. I was expecting to pay that, but when I got there after 5, no one was present to collect money, so up I went. The climb is moderately challenging, with a lot of steps along the trail. It is necessary to be careful, as loose rock and gravel can cause your footing to be unstable. My guess is that it would take someone of reasonable fitness about 30 minutes to complete the ascent, from where you pass the gated entrance. There is a bit of elevation gain added on at the beginning as you come up from the main streets of the village. One thing to note is that walking this trail does not take you all the way to the top of the rock. This is the end of the trail for me. As far as going beyond this point, you have to have rock climbing equipment. I do not own rock climbing equipment. The views are incredible up here though, and then looking up at the monolith, it is incredible how much farther up it goes. Here is that view of the surrounding countryside and the village below. Looking down from this height made me appreciate how much elevation I tackled in a short period of time. Conversely, turning your gaze toward the top of the Peña gives an idea of the amount of climbing that would be necessary to complete a summit. Not being a huge fan of heights, I was somewhat happy that the journey for me ended at this spot. I enjoyed being here at this time of the day, as the sun continuously slipped lower in the west. One thing about hanging on the slopes below the top of the rock is that it didn't appear as majestic as it does when viewing from a distance. After 10 minutes at the small lookout at the top of the climb, there was still the issue of descending the steps and the trail to get back into the village. That actually seemed a lot easier than I imagined it would on the way up. I was back down in about 20 minutes. The crazy thing is, I wasn't even planning on walking up this evening. I was going to save that until in the morning. But I got about halfway up here and decided why not go all the rest of the way. I was going to go have a glass of wine. I think maybe now is the time for that. From that point, it was just a few minutes to get back to the main part of town. Day had turned to dusk, and the light strung over the streets and parks provided an extra bit of beauty. It was easy finding a place that was serving drinks, and while my glass of wine came a little later than I had originally expected, it had the feeling of being well earned. It was almost dark when I got back into town. I did get my wine though. This is a Clerico. It's very similar to a sangria. This part of Mexico is known for its wineries and vineyards. To be honest, I don't know if the wine used in my drink was local, but nonetheless, I enjoyed it. Before my climb of the Peña, I spent several hours exploring the village of Bernal. It was actually a lot more tourist-oriented than I thought it would be. Discovering what the town had to offer was a treat. The center is quite compact, with the majority of the shops, restaurants, and attractions all in an area that is several blocks square. I had a blast just walking the streets. Some avenues were pedestrian only, while others were shared with the few vehicles that entered the heart of the village. 
There were interesting buildings and park areas around every turn. There was even a statue or two scattered around to add even more to the experience. It seemed as though every shop put all of what it had for sale out into the open. Clothing seemed to be the big thing here, with dresses and shirts offered by nearly everyone. I was taken with the look of what was available and loved the presentation as the fabric moved in the breeze. At the very heart of the village was this church. It is the Temple of St. Sebastian the Martyr. This church was built between 1700 and 1725. I have seen so many churches here in Mexico and most of them are much larger than this one. Very few though are any more beautiful. The exterior is remarkable and the colors of the structure really pop in the sunshine. Of particular note is this stone cross with intricate carvings out front. I also walked inside for a view of the interior. It too was quite attractive. The stained glass windows are apparently a fairly recent addition to the structure. Adding to the appeal of this church is a small park off to its side. There are benches and manicured trees and a gazebo and towering palms and just room to rest and appreciate the atmosphere of being at the center of a Pueblo Magico. Oh, and the space is full of birds, which sang so loudly throughout the entire day. All taken together, the church and its adjacent park create a most charming location. On the opposite side of the plaza that contains the Temple of St. Sebastian is a structure called El Castillo. It has an interesting look. From what I read, it was built in the 17th century and is constructed in the style of a German castle. It features a clock tower and several arches. A portion of it holds a museum of cinema, which I did not visit. There are a couple more churches and a couple more museums to mention in Bernal. This is a beautiful little church located a five minute walk outside of the center of town. It is the Capilla de la Cruz, or Chapel of the Holy Cross. Construction here took place between 1815 and 1820. The other church of note is this one, built sometime in the late 17th century or early 18th century. It is the Capilla de la Animas, or Chapel of the Souls. There is a small history museum here, which tells the story of the village of Bernal. A performance space is also located right next to the chapel. The final museum I will talk about is the Museo de la Mascara. It is devoted to masks, as you can see from the photos outside of the building. Some of the masks are local and give insight into the culture of this region, while others are from around the world. I would have definitely paid to go in here, but it wasn't open during my stay. There is a culinary tradition here in Bernal. Time now for the great gordita taste test. I'm going to travel along this section which has numerous gordita shops. It is just outside of the main tourist area. What I'll do is I'll go to three different places, have a gordita at each one, and let you know what I think. There are so many gordita restaurants that I simply had to randomly choose the ones I visited. The first was Gordita's Lupita. Here's gordita number one. It is barbacoa in pasilla, which translates to barbecue in the hallway. It's very hot. One feature of this stall and the others that I chose is that the cooking was right at the front of the shop, visible from the street. I love that. The barbecue filling in this one was messy and I needed a whole pack of napkins to make it through. So number one, a very good start. I would have to say seven or eight. We'll give it an eight because I haven't tasted any others, but 25 pesos, that's about a dollar and a half. U.S. Next up was Gordita's Irenio. This one has picadillo for its filling. Looks really good. All of the cooks were perfectly fine with me capturing some clips of them in action. The structure of the gorditas is similar. The corn cake is cooked, then split. The filling is added to the middle and back onto the griddle for another couple of moments. The picadillo filling was not as messy as the barbecue. If I gave number one an eight, I would have to give number two a 10. It was much more flavorful than the barbecue. The picadillo was really good. It was also 25 pesos. So some consistency there and one more to go. The final of my three shops was Gordita's Anita. Here is number three. 
Instead of a meat filling, I went just for the queso or cheese filling this time. The setup of each of these little restaurants is the same. The griddle is at center stage. There are tables behind that on the inside, and there are also seats out on the sidewalk. Even though I was filling up, I pushed through to complete all three gorditas. I think we have a winner. If number one was an eight, number two was a 10, I'd have to give this place a 12. And the thing that really put it over the top is they salted the corn cake just before they served it to me. That made a really big difference. Very good stuff. And I liked all three of them, but the last one was the best. That was fun. Interesting note, when translating the word gordita, it comes out as chubby girl. I could not make up this stuff. The Pena is on one side of Bernal, and there is a hill on the other side. Situated there is El Mirador, a really nice place to get a look at the rock. The cool thing here is that the Bernal letters are positioned so that it is easy to snap a social media worthy image to share with the world. This was a popular spot with not only the spectacular scenery, but vendors selling snacks, drinks, and souvenirs. You can catch glimpses of the Pena from all over town, but if you want the best view, come up to this road, El Descanso. And there are buses, there are other ways to get up here. You don't have to walk. There were a number of other vantage points along the road in addition to El Mirador. Not one, but two of them also provided the Bernal letters for those who stopped by. No doubt you've heard of or seen the dancing fountains of the Bellagio in Las Vegas. Bernal has its own version. This is right before the entrance to the path you take if you were going to climb the Peña. The best place in town that I found for my morning drink was Ventidos Coffee and Cafe. Ventidos means 22. It is a great little place that was popular with all of the people in town. The cappuccino was tasty, and the food that was coming out of the kitchen looked fantastic. I stayed at Hotel Casa Morada. This is located less than 100 meters from the main street through the village. My room was pretty sweet, and the common areas within the hotel were phenomenal. Especially attractive was the view from the terrace on the top floor. I got all of this for $55 for the night. I walked everywhere in Bernal, but there were plenty of options to do otherwise. There was a trolley that I saw several times. The local taxi service was unusual. It utilized these small vehicles, each branded with the name Carita Bernal. The village is around 35 miles from Carretero. I took a public bus there and back. It was a comfortable and inexpensive way to make the journey. As you can see, I had no trouble finding a seat. I arrived in Bernal early one morning and left at about the same time the next day. Before I caught the return bus to Carretero, I discovered this little area just outside of the center. It was a perfect place to catch the sun illuminating the face of the Peña. The letters in front just added to the scene. This space was set up for performances. As the sun rose above the trees, the view got better and better. It was a nice treat for my final moments in the village. Pueblo Magico, indeed. Would I recommend a visit to Brunel? Absolutely. This is an attractive and cool little town, and the monolith looming over the village simply puts it over the top. There's a lot to take in for such a small place. I am here in the middle of the week, and there are plenty of people around, just not this early in the morning. A few businesses are closed, but most are open. I've heard that the weekends in Bernal get quite busy, so I will leave it to you to decide what level of crowd you would like to deal with. Thanks for being with me here on Old, Alone, and Far From Home. I will see you next time. <music>